So continuing with our next topic on mobile automation with APM, we are going to talk about the APM location strategy. Now, in order to identify any particular element in your mobile application, be it Android or iOS, you need to follow some locator strategies which are available in APM WebDriver. Now, APM by default, it supports some of the WebDriver locator strategies like uh, the class name or XPath. But it has also got some of the out-of-box locator strategies using which you can identify different elements on your mobile applications. Now, these different properties or attributes uh, could be defined by uh, your mobile developers. Uh, and using these, you can identify your elements in your mobile application. So these are the different strategies uh, which are present uh, in APM. So one is the ID. Now, ID is always a unique identifier. It is a native element unique identifier, which means uh, for native applications, you can use the ID locator in order to locate any particular element. Then we have got the accessibility ID. Now, this is a unique identifier again. It can be used for cross-platform automation, which means you can use it for Android as well as iOS. Then we have got uh, the class name. It is a generic method and it is not unique. So if you use class name, you will find a number of different elements uh, which are having the same class name. Then uh, we have got the name, uh, which is basically the name of the element. Uh, then uh, we have got XPath. Now this is very similar uh, to uh, any particular element which you want to find in an XML document. But keep in mind that uh, it is not a recommended location strategy when you are working with APM because uh, it has got its own performance issues and it is quite slow compared to any other um, APM locators. So if you have got uh, a ID or an accessibility ID or even a class name, you should always use these locators instead of using XPath. Then we have got the Android UI Automator. Now this is a Android specific locator and it is also a unique identifier. So you can use this to identify your elements uniquely. Now what it does, uh, it sends a Java code to the server in order to get an element from different elements. So these are some of the generic locator strategies uh, which you will come across and you will use one of these in most of the cases. In very rare scenarios, you have to use some other locator strategies if none of them are available. Now let's go back to our APM inspector and let's see what are the different locator strategies when we are trying to identify any particular element in our mobile application and uh, how we can find different uh, locators using a search option in your APM inspector. So uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, load one of uh, the capability sets which I have saved here. So uh, we'll launch this Android one and we will start the session here. It will open this application, API demos. So now if I go ahead and if I try to identify a particular element, I select this particular element here and then uh, I look at the selected element, you can see here, uh, this is the find by and this is the selector, right? And then we have got different attributes and values. But in order to identify a particular element, you will be using one of the locator strategies. So either we can use the accessibility ID or we can use the Android UI Automator, which is a Android specific locator strategy, or you can use the XPath. Now, if you want to see the performance of each of these locator strategies, that also you can do using this get timing option, which is present in inspector. So click on here. And then uh, for each selector, you will find the time in milliseconds. So here you will see the Android UI automator is the fastest in terms of performance. The accessibility ID is little slower compared to UI automator and XPath uh, is the slowest. It takes the maximum amount of time among all these three locator strategies. So you need to be careful when you are trying to use any particular locator strategy, you should consider the performance of your locator strategy when you are trying to 
use them for your mobile applications because it can impact your overall execution. Now, there is also an option in Inspector where you can search a particular element, whether it is present in the application with the help of a selector. So if I select this Android.UI automator, uh, I copied this selector value. And then on the top, you will see there is a search for element option. Now, if I click here, you will see the different locator strategies which are present for this particular driver. So there is ID, there is XPath, there is name, there is class name, accessibility ID, and UI automator. Now we have discussed all of these different locator strategies, and this is what is also showing up in your APM inspector. So you have to use one of these locator strategies. Now also you need to take care of the performance as we discussed. So as we know that the UI automator is the fastest, right? So we can select UI automator here in the locator strategy and in the selector, uh, we can pass on the value here, which we copied earlier. This is the value. And then uh, we click on search. Now, if uh, that particular element can be located in the application using this particular selector, then uh, it will return you the number of elements which is found, the time it took, uh, it is 177 milliseconds, and the number of elements found was one. If there are more than one element, it will show it here. Also, it will return you this particular element ID. You can see this element ID is the same um, as the attribute element ID and the value which it has. Okay, so using this match, you can uh, say that this particular uh, selector is able to locate uh, the element in your application. So this is one way of validating whether your selector is actually working and whether it is uniquely able to identify a particular element in your application. So if the number of elements found is one, that means it is unique. If it is more than one, then it is not unique. So this way you can search for elements. You can look at the time taken by all the different selectors or the locator strategies which you are trying to use before you actually use them in your code. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.